Welcome to Dust 2, Episode 2, and what I consider to be the proper start for this project. You see, I wasn't too happy with the changes I made in Episode 1. I did them with good intentions and with a specific goal in mind, but failed to foresee the unintended consequences of the changes. Typically, what they do to change the behaviour of the other team. That blue crate on Long A, for example. Some people said it made it very T-sided. Actually, from my testing, it felt very CT-sided. The point is, it wasn't fun. So I moved it back to where it was originally and instead tried a very different kind of change. A few of you suggested other paths and windows at Long A for players to peek out from, but this seemed like too much effort, so I added back a door, and a wooden one at that, along with a barrel. As tees, it's possible to boost and to peek over the top of the door for a limited but very important view into Long. I also closed up the ramp at Long A a bit to improve visibility should there be any camping CTs down there. Definitely makes it feel a lot sunnier as well, which is always a bonus. The biggest change, perhaps, is to middle, where I put a corridor through, leading to the scaffolding between T-spawn and B-tunnels. Now hear me through here. I thought long and hard about what such a change would do. It doesn't affect CTs much at all, unless they successfully push well beyond where they should. But for Ts, it provides them with a faster rotate from between mid and B and vice versa, without having to run all the way around through T-spawn again. Let's face it, it takes too much time for both teams when this happens. So let's see how this change pans out. I also had another stab here, where the monstrosity used to be. To obstruct view from T-Snipers, I instead replaced it with a much more permanent looking extended wall, leading straight from CT spawn. One of the unintended consequences of the monstrosity I added last time was that it was used by CTs to hide behind, making it even harder for Ts rushing through mid to B. And I guess that this solution doesn't exactly fix that. At first I wanted to cut off the bottom of monstrosity, revealing feet from people behind it. But I can't exactly do that with a stone wall. Let's see how this pans out as well. Oh, and perhaps another biggest change is to this window at B which I moved over a bit to reduce the number of spots that attacking players have to clear. Remember what I said earlier about unintended consequences of the changes? I can picture this change being a great advantage to people defending the site, as from here they can peer right down into mid. So I made it a drop down to stop this kind of peaking mentality. There are still ways back through it from the site, but it's not going to be something that you could do safely and on the whim. I also replaced the doors with wooden ones again, just for old time's sake. Maybe by doing this we'll find a good reason for why they were changed to metal in the first place. People were saying how they missed the car, you strange people. Firstly, it was argued that it helps boost onto the crates here, so I've added a more elegant barrel for this instead now. Even that you can still manage this boost without any of this at all just by running and jumping from the front. Oh, and you also said how you missed calling this bit of the map car, so I gave in and finally added a car back again. Here. I was given several suggestions to the A site that wanted something done with this area here. I'm a little bit scared of changing such an iconic bombsite in such a major way, especially with what it would do to the short A timings. But still, I added a barrel to the corner here so that people who really want to can get to the site this way. Because why not? We're testing changes. And in a similar vein, I removed a few of these baskets in the corner here to experiment with some bangable cover instead. I also removed the scaffolding at T-spawn, added a crate to suicide because it was easy to do and didn't conflict with any of the other suggestions, and I had a go at adding clipping to the stairs and tunnels. But here's the thing. The way in which these stairs are made causes problems with this, as they're so narrow on the inner side that the clip brushes are at more than a diagonal angle, so you'll slip over them from above and get jolted to a stop from underneath. I messed around with the clipping a bit, it's not perfect and there might be a few bugs left, but it should feel somewhat smoother. I'm happy to remove it again in the next update if it proves to be a huge problem. Thanks also to Quoting, who suggested making these trims non-solid so they don't bump your view as you run over them. I also removed one-way flashes and moved the post at the top of mid, as well as other small tweaks and bug fixes that he suggested. There are a few popular suggestions that I didn't do. One said to close up the tunnels again because the smokes you can do from there are too overpowered. Sorry, it seems like too much work to close the tunnels up again for such a vague reason. People suggested resizing the door models in mid to fix the peaking problem. Well, now that I've added another solution, I'd rather try that. Plus there's the small problem that you can't resize models in Source. And a door from CT Spawn to Short was also suggested and upvoted, but I'm not sure what it's the solution to. I can't even begin to work out the implications of such a change right now. Not that these changes shouldn't be tried, but those are my reasons for not trying them in this project. Thank you to Pulse Servers for continuing to provide lovely, wonderful servers for us all to play on, and to the staff behind the scenes who are quick to fix problems and to kick hackers. And to David Randall for the song that you can check out in the cards of this video. But sadly, not the annotations anymore. Because YouTube removed them. Stupid. And thanks also to everybody who has contributed to this project so far. Check out the description for a link to the Reddit topic for suggestions on this new version of the map. I'm sure that, with help from this new episodic format, that we'll see episode 3 very soon.